Hi, I'm Sherry from Homeschooling on a Wing and a Prayer. So, this is my very late to the party top five homeschool mistakes collab video. Hmm. I'll put all the links down below of how you can get on the uh, the roster or whatever you want to call it. So apparently we're supposed to talk about what we feel are some of the uh, top mistakes we've made as homeschoolers and well, I suppose if you're new to homeschooling your mistakes are probably not as ridiculous as mine because I've had oh at least a good 25 years. Am I supposed to be choosing five mistakes per year? At which case multiply that times five, you get 25 to... Uh, what, oh, mm. Listen, folks, you're going to make mistakes. I've made them every single year. You think you get really smart when you've been in a, in the trenches for about, oh, I don't know, five to seven years. You think, I've got it. This I've got a handle on this. I'm going to just power through and just be like so on it. <coughs> Guess what? You actually start to get yourself a little bit comfy, and then you start blowing it. So, you know, if you're a first-time homeschooler or if you're a veteran like me and you've been doing it forever and a day, you're going to make mistakes. So, that said, I had a hard time pinning down just five because I've made pretty much every single one out there. Um, these are in no particular order. Hang on, i got to check my notes. Let's see. Well, first and foremost, I do want to highlight this one especially. Um, thinking that the mistakes that we make and our students make are total epic failures, um, actually they're not. I really feel like they were and are some of the best opportunities for growth and improvement. You have to allow yourself some grace and get over the shock and dismay that you've failed, but when you're done, you realize, you know what, you've really been able to find something about yourself to work on and improve and change. So mistakes equals opportunities to improve, not failures. Um, your kids, the precious, precious little things that they are. Those little bundles of joy. Um, they usually don't care. I know. I know it was probably just my punks. It's not yours. Your kids, your, your precious children, I'm sure, are just like all in, 100% with everything and anything that you are doing. But my punks, <laughs> time and time again, they proved me wrong that uh, I was all geeked and excited about something. And this is usually a typical scenario. Let's just share it with you. Like, oh, children, aren't we so excited? Look at what we're going to find out today. Look at that. 100 divided by 20 equals 5. Isn't that spectacular? Or, we're going to learn about George Washington. He was the first president of the United States. Isn't that wonderful? We're going to conjugate verbs today, kitties. Oh, I can see the excitement in your eyes. The twinkle. Their response is usually typical. Something like, uh-huh. Um, so can we have SpaghettiOs for lunch, Mom? I kid you not. So don't expect your enthusiasm and excitement for every single thing you want to throw at them to be extended to them because, frankly, kids really don't care. If you've ever spent like a boatload of money on gifts and stuff and they rip through the packaging and like, oh, that's wonderful, and they toss it aside and then they start building like homemade forts with the boxes, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, it's good to have enthusiasm. It's good to get excited. It's good to talk it up. Because a lot of times they think they're going to be bored to tears and they actually end up really liking what it is you're... But you cannot expect them to be gung-ho on every single subject and every single minor detail. Let's face it, none of us are. It's, it's too much brain overload. Your brain just goes... I can't handle that. And don't expect your kids to either. And please don't expect them to remember everything. You know, that's why you do repetitive, like maybe you cover American history in third or fourth grade and then you do it again in junior high, high school. Because there's just no way. I mean, come on. Children's brains are like sponges, but even sponges have their limit capacity. So just keep in the back of your mind. Your kids really aren't always going to care. At least my punks, like I said, didn't. And that's okay because, you know, that's just life. Okay, that's that, too. Um, 
Oh, this is a good one. Expecting your kids to live up to your standards and expectations, their children. Um, let's face it, we're usually probably even harder on ourselves. I know I am. I was a really bad perfectionist. The Lord has really been working with me on that. Now I may have swung a little bit to the opposite side. But, um, you know, your uh, overzealous perfectionistic expectations. I mean, it's good to expect something. Kids will not push themselves if you don't kind of like give them, you know, something to work for. But don't expect them to live up to all of it. It's just not fair. Don't expect yourself to live up to your ridiculous expectations. We think we can do everything. Guess what? We can't. We're only human. And there's only so many hours in the day. And, you know, maybe that's a whole other video. But let me just say, if you're super perfectionist, like I know a lot of us are, you got to let some things go. you got to just go with the flow. It's not worth the crying and the tears and the fractured relationships with your children or your husband or yourself. So that's the other one. Oh, this is a good one. Over planning and over scheduling. I know it's okay to like have extra goodies packed in your list, but when you over plan and over schedule, like I'm talking like trying to accomplish 30 different type of subjects and activities within a month's time, we've all been there. We all, oh, we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that. And, Oh, we got time for this and that. And usually you end up doing maybe three out of that long list, and that's okay. But uh, do not overplan yourself. I mean, all that does is lead to epic, epic burnout. And actually, I called it the failure syndrome because you feel like you're a failure. You haven't checked off all of those things on your list. And you know what, folks? The longer I've done this, the more I can tell you. Most of that stuff we think is so important that we cram into our kids' heads and make sure they do all those activities and get all this crap. It's really what it is done. It doesn't really matter. Not in the long run. I mean, the basics are good. Doing a few extra things. I mean, we literally spent like 12 months on astronomy with my son back when he was a little bit younger. And I kid you not, less than three months after we had finished it, where I was talking about the moon and stuff. And he's like, did we cover the moon? <laughs> okay. He remembered after I reminded him of the Oreo cookie moon project. But um, yeah, so they're just not going to remember everything. So don't, don't worry about it. There'll be time to come back around. And if you don't get to it, the biggest thing you want to teach them is how to figure out how to get the information if they're interested. And last but not least, my biggest epic failure, not only as a homeschooler, but as a person and a mother, was not allowing myself to feel okay to take some downtime. I felt like I was a bad mom if I wanted to spend some time away from my kids. or Because a lot of times, especially when I was a young mom, you know, back in the 80s, uh, they, you know, the pressure was there. Ooh, my husband's home. Yay. All right, so I'm going to have to hurry up and get off. But I just want to say... Not allowing yourself downtime and recharge time is a foolish thing. It's okay. You owe yourself that because in the end, you're a better mom, a better homeschooler, a teacher, a wife, a friend, a person. You've got to give yourself whatever it is, just even a half hour a week if that's all you can muster for a while. Give yourself that downtime. All right, those are some of the five biggest mistakes I think I can come up with right now. I'm sure I can come up with more. Any questions or comments, leave them down below in the description box. Be sure to check out the collab links, and I'll put those in the description. Did I say put your comments in the description box? You don't even know what I'm talking about. That's another mistake, not enough sleep. All right, till next time, folks. Hope this has been helpful, and take care.